In this tutorial I will show you how to create a Kakaris Latuka In this tutorial I will show you how to create an infinite scroll of the list of images that will appear in the viewport with animation and lazy load. Uh, we will use intersection observer for it and uh, react and react hooks. So let's have a look how it works before my mouse is eaten by Dracarys. So what is intersection observer? It's an API of a browser that allows us to know if element entered the viewport or left it. And now she tries to attack me because I don't let her touch the flowers. This bird is a poor evil. So let's start. To start we will need two things. Uh, first. Uh, we need to install a React Create uh, Create React app uh, boilerplate for our project, uh, just not to bother with setting up webpack and stuff. Uh, we can do it very easily with the npx command. And the second thing that we will do is. Um, we will uh, choose a free public API to get uh, the list of objects. In our case it will be images uh, and I found this uh, very useful uh, GitHub uh, repo with a list of uh, many public APIs uh, and I want to choose one from the photography section. Latuka. Latuka. Uh, she tries to eat my mouse. It's birthday gift, so I don't want this mouse to be eaten by Dracarys. She already destroyed one of my mice. I uh, think I will make a video about it. I will choose one of these uh, APIs that can return me a list of pictures just to use it in this tutorial. Uh, let's see what we have here. Some of them need a login and register, but I don't want to register and I just will use this Lorem Pixum uh, library. Dracarys, stop eating flowers. I will leave the link to this API document below the video so, uh, so you can uh, choose something for you. So now when our um, uh, React uh, app is installed, we can run yarn start and start coding. Um, Let's get rid of uh, things in app.js that we don't need now. We'll just delete it. And the first thing I would like to do now is uh, to uh, fetch our images from API. Uh, to do this we will create a file uh, with a function that will do our fetch. And in this function we will just export fetch images. This function will accept only one argument, page. We will hard code the link from this API. It has um, page number and limit. Limit we will set to 5, just not to scroll too much to see. And uh, page will be our uh, argument page. Yeah, and this function should be asynchronous, of course, because fetch uh, we'll return a promise and then we can just return a response JSON. We need to do this because uh, the response object is not really a plain JavaScript object, it's a response stream. And here we also need to add a wait because the uh, response JSON also returns a promise. Now uh, we can use it in our app.js. Uh, let's just create a hook, a use effect hook. Um, it will be without dependencies now. 
and uh, in this hook we will call our function fetch images Yeah, Dracarys, I hear you. I know you're disappointed that I don't let you do eat flowers, but this is just not an option. These flowers is not for eating. Uh, so um, in this use effect, uh, we call our fetch images and we print it to console log just to make sure that it works. Yeah, we have an array of uh, images uh, and that it's exactly what we need. Now, when we got our images, uh, we need to render them. And uh, to render, uh, we will create a separate image component. And uh, in this component, uh, we'll just uh, accept one property image and render it. Uh, in a our HTML. The source of the image will be image uh, dot uh, download URL. We can see here uh, it's one of the uh, fields that we get from our API. And in order to display it, uh, we need uh, to add uh, uh, we need to add to it a file format, and I will add just JPEG. And also, let's uh, specify alternative text, and let's make it just an author of the image. So yeah, that, that, this is it. This is our image. Uh, let's also set the width, the size of the image, because it will be huge if we don't do this. And now we can uh, import our component in app.js. We can uh, iterate through our images uh, with map. Oh, wait, we can't. First, we need to um, uh, create a state. And we will set it to an empty array. And uh, let's not forget to import it. Uh, so we, uh, instead of uh, logging these images, we will uh, set an image list. And now we can iterate through it with a map. Okay, it seems I um, made some syntax error. Yeah, I forgot one parenthesis here. So yeah, happens. And now we have a list of our images. And now uh, we need to detect uh, which is image is the last one uh, because we want to see uh, when the last image is entering the viewport and then we want to make a request to our API to load the next page. So we will find the last image using the index of uh, our uh, item. We will pass the property and check if index is equal image list length minus one. And here an image component 
we can use it. And now finally, I want to introduce you an intersection observer syntax. Uh, to use it in React, uh, we need to uh, first to import a useref hook. and to create a ref for our image. And then uh, assign it. Uh, now we need hook a use effect again. Uh, in the dependencies of this use effect, uh, will be our image ref and uh, if there is no image ref uh, or it does not have a current property uh, current it's a property it's a field that points to our DOM uh, node if we don't have it we just return and if we have, we create an, a new observer. And we pass the callback. Uh, and all interesting things will happen in this callback. The first argument of, the, of this callback is an array of items that we observe. And we need to get the first item, entry. And uh, now we can check if uh, this entry uh, is uh, visible or if it's intersecting our viewport or not. Uh, let's uh, log it and see how we can do it. And of course we need to call our observer and pass uh, our DOM node to it. So now we are observing all our images and you can see in the console log uh, every uh, entry uh, has few um, properties. Uh, this uh, bonding client rect is just the uh, dim dimensions of our image. Uh, intersection ratio uh, is the value that uh, tells us uh, how much of the entire element is intersecting. If it's 1, means this, the 100% of element is intersecting a viewport. If it's 0 0.5, it means that 50% is intersecting. So it's a uh, um, percentage value. And intersection rect uh, is um, dimensions uh, of the part that is intersecting. In case if uh, the entire image is in the viewport, it will be the same as bounding client rect. And is intersecting, it's uh, the property that we need now uh, to see if our element is in viewport or not. If it's true, it's in viewport. If it's not true, it's outside of the viewport. Let's check if our element is last and if it's in the viewport. And then we will console log. So let's refresh our page. Uh, now we get it immediately. It happens because uh, when our images are loaded, uh, they have uh, zero height and they are all in viewport. To fix it, uh, we can uh, add style to our container and uh, set the mean height, let's say 100 pixels. And now if we uh, refresh, we don't get this uh, console log and we get it only when we actually scroll to our last image. And this warning about the key we will fix uh, we just need to add key in our array. Let's add just an ID of the image. We got rid of the warning. And when we scroll to our last image, we get this, uh, this console log. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is to, uh, not just to uh, show this uh, message, but actually fetch the next page of our uh, images. Now let's fetch our uh, next page. 
uh, and to do it uh, we will go to our app.js and we will create another state uh, for our page and by default our page will be uh, equal to 1 and uh, this page we will pass to our fetch images and now if we go to network we can see that uh, when we call our request the page is equal 1 uh, and uh, I also want to change this use effect hook and to add the dependency page here uh, and I will add the function as it will be a next page function that will just increment our page to 1 And every time this function increments our page, this use effect with will uh, trigger and uh, our uh, fetch images function will fetch the next page. Now we pass, the, uh, we will pass this uh, next uh, page function to our image, and we will call it here in our uh, condition. Uh, now it tells us that we need to add is last and next page as the dependencies. I will add is last, but I will not add uh, the next page to the dependency. And one more thing we need to change in our app.js is uh, this set image list. Now we just set new images here, but we need to use the previous uh, the previous state and. Uh, add the new state, the new images to our previous state instead of just overriding it. We're scrolling to our last image and we get more pictures and then again and then again and if you take a look at the network tab we are uh, downloading one, two, three, fourth um, we downloading next pages successfully. Oh! She bites. Look, look at this. Someone is gonna be locked in the cage today. Yes, Dracaris. Dracaris is gonna be locked. There are a few options in Intersection Observer that can be useful for uh, infinite scroll. Uh, the one of them root. Here you can set up the container uh, that you're gonna scroll. By default it's the entire page but you may have a, a scrollable div that you want to um, where you want to set this infinite scroll with observer. And another option is root margin. This option helps us to extend or to reduce our root container. It will uh, trigger the um, intersection observer event uh, earlier or later uh, then, then it basically will enter the container. For example, if we add here um, in this root margin 100 pixels, okay, flowers are going away. So we can, uh, we can use this uh, root margin uh, for our... Dracaris is not happy because I removed flowers. Uh, so we can use these options, we can pass them here and uh, if we want our infinite scroll to load images uh, not when last one is in viewport but a little bit earlier, let's say when it's 200 pixels before the viewport or 100 pixels before, then we can uh, set it here and let's see if it works. So you may see on this scroll, it doesn't reach the end. We don't see the last image yet, but it already loads. Uh, it already loads more pictures. 
uh, you can also use the percentage value here for example 25 percent and it will be it will work the same way or 50 percent uh, I think uh, these percents are related to the image to the block that we are observing uh, okay I'm sorry Dracaris is eating my tea bag Uh, I had to lock her in the cage because it's uh, getting really annoying and I can't finish this video if I need to jump every five minutes and uh, try to save her from eating uh, toxic plants or my used tea bags or something else that she wants to destroy. I want to use it here with a value of 100 pixels. I think it's enough. And another thing that I already did here but uh, I'm not sure if I explained about it we don't want uh, our last image to uh, trigger th uh, the page load again if we scroll back to it uh, so after it appeared once in the viewport uh, we uh, stop observing it and uh, this is the syntax how to do it we just use unobserved method on our observer and pass uh, the entry target to it so Dracaris is in cage, flowers are back and we continue with our um, intersection observer and what I want to do now is to change it, uh, to refactor it into the hook uh, we can uh, just move all lo the logic that is related with intersection observer in a separate file and use it as a hook so uh, let's create a file for our hook Our hook will accept uh, two parameters, our ref and options. And now we can move some logic to, to our hook. And of course we need to import use effect. Uh, and we replace the image ref with the ref uh, we get rid of uh, is last because this is not our logic and we get rid of this as well uh, this uh, object we replace with our options and actually we will uh, destructure options and use the root margin separately and uh, what do we return from our hook we're gonna return an entry and we will create a state for it And by default it will be null and here where we unobserve our entry we will also set it and just uh, to avoid a name collision I will uh, rename it to observer entry and now we can return our entry from the hook and let's try to use it in image.js our hook 
is named use observer. We pass the image ref to it and our options. And now here we can uh, remove all the logic related with um, intersection observer. And instead of image ref, we can uh, depend on entry here. So if entry, if there is no entry, we will do nothing. If uh, entry is exist and it's intersecting, we will load our next page. And let's check if it's working. Yeah, looks like it's working. Yeah, it uh, loads the next page. Uh, so we can delete this console log already. Now we have our intersection observer refactored to a hook and it makes our code cleaner and uh, more convenient to use. We can reuse this intersection observer in different components. Uh, and now when our infinite scroll is working, I want to add to it a lazy loading. It will be very easy. We just uh, replace the SRC of our images with uh, data attribute. And our S SRC we will assign to another variable um, image URL. And we will create a state here for it. And we will set it empty string by default. And of course we need to import. When our image uh, is coming to viewport, uh, we uh, want to add the actual URL to it. So let's uh, do it here in our use effect. And uh, as you see, it's working. And if we take a look in our source code, uh, for example, this last image, it does not have um, an actual SRC tag, it has only data attribute. But when we scroll to it, uh, it appears. And you can see that in the network tab, uh, if we choose images, when we slowly scrolling, uh, it loads. And uh, the last thing I want to add here is animation. Uh, for animation, we uh, will have to create an, a CSS file for our image component. And in this CSS, we will define two classes. One will be the basic class for image, and we will set the opacity to zero and transform property. Uh, let's uh, do it translate y um, 100 pixels and second class that we want to have here is class for the image who uh, that is uh, in the viewport that it just appears and we will set opacity to 1 and transform translate zero. It will create an, uh, an animation uh, with uh, an image that will uh, fade in and uh, with a slight moving uh, to the top. And we add the transition 0 0.5 seconds. I think it will be all right. And let's import our CSS file. And let's add uh, class names. Uh, 
uh, we will use a condition here if image is visible then we will add our show class and if not we will just uh, return empty string now we need to create a state variable for is visible uh, same as we did for image URL and by default it will be false but when uh, our uh, image is uh, intersecting uh, the viewport we want to set is visible to the true but uh, we don't want to use our first uh, observer where we have this root margin to uh, one ha set to 100 pixels because our animation will uh, happen before image will be in the viewport and we will not see it so uh, i will create another intersection observer and uh, i will call it animated entry and the root margin will be zero So now we can add another use effect. And to add the dependency animated entry. And if animated entry is intersecting, then uh, we will set is visible to the true. And yes, of course, we need to check if it's not null. Now let's take a look if it's working. Hmm, I don't really see if it's working. Oh yeah, I forgot to add the class to element. Class name, image class. So now you can see our image nicely uh, comes from the bottom with a slight uh, fade in. And this is it. This is our nice animation. So that's it. Below the video I will leave the link to GitHub uh, to the repo for the code for this tutorial. And if you have questions or if you just uh, stuck with something and need help, don't hesitate, uh, write a comment below and if it was useful for you, hit the like button. Thank you! Do you want to know what this crazy animal is doing now? She ate some uh, leaves of the flowers and now she just vomits them and eats them again. This animal is terrible!